Let's now go to Parliament and a revised Ijapa royalties deal will not be supported by the minority. Evaluations of Ghana's related gold assets don't exceed $3.8 billion. Former Deputy Finance Minister Dr. Kezel Atuforsen tells TV3 considerable scrutiny will be devoted in making sure the 49% shareholding investment company is not incorporated in an offshore tax haven. Currently, the government is saying the valuation is a billion US dollars and they are selling 49% out there to get about 500 billion US dollars. We are saying that is grossly undervalued and that will mean that government of Ghana has given taxpayers money of about 1.3 billion US dollars away. We will not accept any valuation that is going to be under 3.7 billion US dollars that we are not going to accept. For government of Ghana to incorporate a Ghana's sovereign world fund in a tax haven. Jay-Z will not accept that because we are aware of its consequences and the fact that it's a lot of the activities in tax havens are not in a transparent manner. Currently, the world is debating and talking about the Pandora box and we know what it means. And we've heard so much about it, how people are hiding assets and not paying taxes. I'm surprised that the government of Ghana, a sovereign country like ours, will surround that the country's sovereign world fund into a tax haven institution. The minority is concerned government is adamant in properly repackaging the new royalties deal to reflect concerns of the public and civil society. Consequently, the revised structure can face hurdles if not adequately tweaked. Any attempt to take tomorrow's revenue for today's expenditure will mean that government is not thinking about tomorrow and they are not smoothing their consumption. We are going to oppose any attempt for government to do that. And let me say this, the NDC minority and the NDC party have resolved that we will oppose a Japa anytime, any day, if any of the things that I've talked about are not addressed. And that is important that we discuss, we make it clear. Meanwhile, the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations against the Japan deal says it would pile more pressure on government to get the deal scrapped if it is tabled again until the necessary amendments that they raised concerns about earlier are also addressed. Ideally, that should be the case, that all the key stakeholders are brought on board so that one can structure something that we all understand. A key aspect of it is simply the assumptions. What are the assumptions uh, that have informed why we are saying this is the value we are giving and what the structuring as well. So between the assumptions and the structuring plus management, uh, if you don't bring the key stickers on board to understand what it is, the likelihood is that you face the same stiff opposition. So let's see what they have. But I, I would have preferred a situation where in deciding what they are bringing back to the table, all the key stakeholders have been on board so that we are sure that it can go through. But the minister says they've done their homework. Whether the homework is simply the fact that they've looked at the questions that were raised previously and addressed them, um, or it is that we've taken that on board and invited the stakeholders, which is what would have been the preferred situation, is something that we don't know. It's going to be difficult to pass it this time if they've not addressed the key issues. Uh, and I anticipate that uh, the key stakeholders for the extractives will really be keen on having a say.